Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. First impressions mean a lot. You always want to start off on the right foot. While this mantra holds true to a lot of things in life, it also applies to the NFL and its officials. If you're a referee, the last thing you want fans or players or coaches to think is that you're incompetent and can't do your job. Yes, we've seen referees blow tons and tons of calls before, and we will continue to see these missed calls going forward. They're always going to be a part of the game. But if you officiate a pretty solid game and then screw up a call sometime in the third quarter, the perception is going to be different than screwing up a call right off the bat. Almost like you're giving a warning to everyone that this game could be one heck of a wild ride. But imagine screwing up not one, but two calls right off the bat. Two calls at the very start of the game within the first five minutes that were incredibly obvious and could change the entire complexion of the game, and you screw both of them up. And to make matters worse, you're doing this in front of a nationally televised audience. Well, in one Sunday Night Football game in 1992, that's exactly what happened. In a game between the San Francisco 49ers and the New Orleans Saints, the referee screwed up two terrible calls in the first five minutes. And this is the story behind the worst officiated start in NFL history. Before I talk about the plays in question, we need some context going into the game, as well as the landscape of the league regarding officiating at the time. It's September 27, 1992, and we head to the Louisiana Superdome for this NFC West rivalry between the New Orleans Saints and the San Francisco 49ers. This is a pretty big game at the start of the year for both of these teams, as the 49ers and Saints sit at 2-1, tied for first place in the NFC West. Whoever wins this one has a one-game lead at the quarter pole with the head-to-head -head tiebreaker, and this was expected to be a pretty good game. The Niners had the top offense in the NFC through three weeks, scoring 93 points. In a bizarre coincidence, they scored exactly 31 points in each of their first three games, and were coming off of a convincing 31-14 victory over the New York Jets, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. As for the Saints, they had the second best defense in the NFC, allowing just 28 points through their first three games. In one of those games, a 28-6 home victory against the Chicago Bears, they scored two defensive touchdowns and the Saints had already forced nine turnovers through three weeks. But perhaps most important for the context of our story, besides the fact that this was a big game and would receive national attention as a Sunday Night Marquee game on TNT, was the situation regarding instant replay. Without diving too much into the history of replay, in 1986, the league created the first instant replay system. It was heavily flawed. It had many problems and led to a bunch of calls still being incorrect. After some tweaking, yeah, it was still flawed. Due to the system's ineffectiveness, after the 1991 season, replay was abolished. Whatever the call on the field turned out to be, was what it was going to be. Right off the bat in 1992, those in favor of instant replay were up in arms. The Jets kicked it off, and Eric Pegram returned it. He fumbled the ball, the Jets recovered, and were in a great position to take the lead for the first time today. Except despite this clearly being a fumble, the referee ruled that Pegram was down. Despite the flaws of instant replay's old system, this play would have been overturned in a heartbeat. Instead, it may have wound up costing the Jets the game. And let's just say that a few weeks later, in this Saints 49ers game, the critics were about to have a field day. We start on the second play of the game. Bobby Bear drops back to pass for the Saints and his Wesley Carroll for a first down. The only problem? Carroll fumbles, and it's recovered by the 49ers. Fun fact, this was the only fumble of Carroll's entire career. Granted, he only played three seasons in the NFL, and the second round pick was expected to do way more than he wound up doing, but this was the only time he ever put the ball on the ground. Except this should not have been a fumble. Not at all. Because it's pretty clear that Carroll was on the ground when he lost control of the ball. Let's pause at the moment that Carroll hits the ground, and yeah, he still has the ball. Credit to Dave Whitmore and Bill Romanowski for helping punch it free, but this should have been a first down for the Saints to help keep their first drive of the game alive. Instead, the 49ers get the ball, already in prime position to score. Steve Young and Ricky Waters are able to get San Francisco into the red zone, and eventually, the two-yard line. They're now facing a second-and-goal situation, and what you're about to witness might be even worse than the last call. The first call was bad, don't get me wrong, but this one might be on an entirely different stratosphere. Young throws it to his main man, Jerry Rice, who tries to get into the end zone. Rice stretches the football across the plane to get it into the end zone before losing it, the Saints recover, but none of this should matter. First off, Rice crossed the plane, so this should be a touchdown. And the Niners should be leading 7-0, assuming that the extra point goes through. 
However, even if Rice didn't cross the plane, he was clearly down when he lost control of the football. His knee is down, his elbow is down, pretty much every part of his body is down. But even if Rice wasn't down, this is still not a fumble since the ground caused it, and the ground cannot cause a fumble. That's one of the most basic rules of the game. You hear it at least once a game by the announcing crew. By literally every definition and letter of the law, this should not be a turnover. This should be a touchdown for the 49ers, or at the very least, third and goal at the inch yard line. Instead, you guessed it, the referees ruled it a fumble, and the Saints had possession. Within the first five minutes of the game, the referees had screwed up not one, but two turnover calls. And in the aftermath, all the talk centered around this absolutely atrocious start. Before I mention what happened next, the referees responsible here were typically very good at their jobs. One of them was headlinesman Aaron Pointer, who worked in the NFL for close to two decades and even officiated some conference championship games. The other one was head referee Bernie Kukar, who worked a few Super Bowls later on, serving as the referee at Super Bowl 33 and Super Bowl 36. These were not bad referees. These were not officials who didn't know how to do their jobs. But on this day, they were heavily scrutinized, and rightfully so. The 49ers wound up winning the game 16-10, sealing the deal in the final seconds in dramatic fashion after Eric Davis intercepted Saints quarterback Bobby Hebert in the end zone. But after the game, all the talk was about the controversy at the start, and what had to be the worst officiated start to a game ever. Jerry Rice was pretty blunt, saying it's the worst game I've ever played in with so many bad calls. It was crazy out there. Keep in mind that he was on the winning team. He was also adamant that he scored a touchdown and broke the plane, and it's not hard to see why. And even in retrospect, Pointer said that in his near two decade long officiating career in the league, the play he remembered most was botching that call with Rice. Fortunately, it didn't seem like this had any implication on the season long term. The 49ers and Saints both made the postseason, with the 49ers winning the division at 14 and 2 and getting the number one seed in the conference, and the Saints getting the top wildcard spot as the number four seed with a 12 and 4 record. Even if the results flipped, nothing would have changed regarding the seeding structure. So at least these awful calls didn't have any long-term repercussions on the league for that 1992 campaign. But despite that, close to 30 years later, this game still lives on in infamy. Two atrocious blown calls in the first five minutes of the game. Talk about what has to be the worst first impression by any officiating crew ever. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JRGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future videos topics in the description below.